Goneril and Regan are like written to be evil. And then when I went back and read it, I was like, no. they're not even written that way. That's how they've been directed for centuries, you know? And Cordelia has been this angel child. No, all three of you are human. You are so human. That's infuriating to me. Cordelia has been this angel child, which further polarizes women from each other. Exactly. Like it's, it's just so either or. Yeah. It's not that she's an angel child. It's just that she's a child. She is she a child. She doesn't under fully comprehend and how to navigate the And that is when women politics. are the most loved. Okay. Yeah. When they're yeah when when they're, and the, ah! the minute that you go against the grain in a patriarchy, you're thrust out. You the know? minute you become a woman, even. The jewels of our father with washed eyes Cordelia leaves you. I know what you are, and like a sister I'm most loath to call your faults as they are made. Of oh, well, our father, to your professed bosom I commit him. But yet, alas, did I within his grace, I'd prefer him to a better place. So farewell to you both. Prescribe us not our duties. Let your study be to content your lord who hath received you at fortune's odds. You have obedience scanted, and well are worth the want that you have wanted. Time shall unfold what plated cunning hides. Who cover faults, at last shame them derides. Well may you prosper. Sister, it is not a little I have to say what most nearly appertains to us both. That's most certain with you the next month with us. See how full of changes his age is, the observation we have made that is not little. He always loved your sister most, and with what poor judgment he hath now cast her off appears too gross. Tis the infirmity of his age, yet he hath ever but slenderly known himself. The best and soundest of his time hath been but a Then must we look to receive from his age not alone the imperfections of long and rough condition, but there with all the unruly waywardness that infirm and choleric years bring with me. Pray you let us get together. If our father carry authority with such disposition as he bears this last surrender of his will defend us, we shall think further on it. We must do something. And in the heat, as you are old and reverend, you should be wise. Here do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so debauched and bold, set the front forth. Infected with their manner shows like a rise of wind. The shame in itself that speed for instant remedy. Be then desired by her that else will take the thing she begs a little. To this quantity your train and the remainder that shall still depend to be such men as may besort your age and know themselves and Darkness die. and devils! Saddle my horses, call my train together. Degenerate bastard! I'll not trouble thee, yet have I left a daughter. And your disordered rabble make servants of their beggars. Oh, the too late repents. <laughs> sir, are you here? Is it your will? Speak, sir. Prepare my horses. Ingratitude, thou marble hearted fiend, more hideous when thou showest thee in a child than the sea monster. Yes, sir, by your patience. Detested kite, thou liest. My train are, are men of choice and rarest parts, and in the most exact regard support the worship of their name. Oh, most small fault. How ugly didst thou and Cordelia show. <laughs> leer, 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 be to this gate that doth thy folly in and my dear judgment out. Go. Go, my people. My lord, I am guiltless as I am ignorant of what hath moved. Hear, nature, hear, dear goddess, hear. Suspend thy purpose if thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful. Into her womb convey sterility, dry up in her the organs of increase, and from her derogate body never spring a babe to honor her. If she must teem, create her child of spleen, that it may be a thwart, disnatured torment to her. Let it stamp wrinkles in her brow of youth, turn all her mother's pains and benefits to laughter and contempt, that she may feel how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is than to have a thankless child. Away. Away! What's in a name, really? She's the daughter of the king. That doesn't mean anything except for the grief that it's caused her. Yeah, or her. Because or son her. of the king means so much different than daughter of the king. Mm. Oh. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, but I was going to say, do you think there... I, well, I think there may be some great resentment toward, from Lear toward um, Goneril and Regan, and maybe even a little bit Cordelia, maybe not so, maybe, that they were not born men. Like, actually. Like, that thought that... You don't have an you heir. You disappointed me yeah. by... Your That's own. a very real... By your existence. Yeah. By, yeah. In love with Regan, my sister's not. She had tied sharp tooth on kindness like a vulture here. Oh, Regan, I can scarce speak to thee. I do not believe it with such a depraved quality. Oh, Regan. Will you, sir, take patience? I have hope. You must know how to value her deserving she to stand her duty. Say, how is that? I cannot think my sister. My curse is on her. Oh, sir, you are old. Nature in you stands on the very verge of her confine. You should be ruled and led by some discretion that discerns your state better than you yourself. Therefore, I advise you that you do return to my sister and say you have wronged her. Ask her forgiveness. Return you to my Never, sister. Never, Regan. She hath abated me of half my train. All the stored vengeances of heaven fall on her ungrateful top. Strike her, young bones, you taking airs the with blessed labor. God, so will you wish on me when the rash mood is on. Never, Regan. Thou shalt never have my curse. Thy tender, hefted nature shall not give the or to harshness. Her eyes are fierce, but thine to comfort and not burn. Tis not in me to cut off half my train and oppose the bolt against my coming in. Thou better knowest the offices of nature, bond of childhood. Thy half the kingdom thou hast not forgotten, which I thee endowed. Good, sir, to the purpose. Who put my man in the stocks? Is your lady come? This is a slave whose easy borrowed pride dwells in the fickle grace of her he follows. Out, varlet, from my sight. What means your grace? Who stalked my man? Regan, I have good hope thou didst not know on it. But who comes here? <laughs> oh, heavens, if you do love old men, if your sweet sway allow obedience, if you yourselves are old, make it your cause. Send down and take my part. Ah, Regan, wilt thou take her by the hand? Why not by the hand, sir? How have I offended? All's not offense that indiscretion finds in dotage terms. Ah, hide! You are too tough. Will you yet hold? Who stalked my man? I did, sir. But his own disorders deserve much less advancement. You, did you? I pray you, father, being weak, seem so. If till the expiration of your month you'll return and sojourn with my sister, dismissing half your train, come then to me. I am now out of my home and out of that provision which shall be needful for your entertainment. Return to her, and fifty men dismissed? No, rather I abjure all roofs and choose to wage against the enmity of the air. Necessity's sharp pinch. Return to her. Persuade me rather to be slave and subner to this detested groom. That's your choice. I prithee, daughter, do not make me mad. I'll not trouble thee, my child. Farewell. Well, no more meat, no more see one another. I can be patient. I can stay with Regan, I and my hundred knights. Not all together, sir. Is this well spoken? There about it, sir. What, fifty followers? Is it not well? What should you need of more? Why might not you, sir, receive attendance from those that she calls servants or from mine? Why not, my lord? If then they should chance to slap you, we could control them. If you will come to me, I entreat you bring but five and twenty, to no more will I give place or notice. I gave you all. And in good time you gave Thank it. You my guardians, my depositaries, yet kept a reservation to be followed with such a number. What, must I come to you with five and twenty reasons, said yourself? And speak it again, my lord, no more with me. I'll go with thee. By fifty, yet doth double five and twenty, and thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord, what need you five and twenty? Ten or five? What oh, need one? Reason not the need. Our basest beggars are in the poorest things superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature needs. Man's life is cheap as beasts. Thou art a lady, 
if only to go warm more gorgeous, nature needs not but thou gorgeous wearest but to tell truth. Oh, you gods, give me that patience, patience I need. If it be you, you gods, that stir these daughters' hearts against their father, fool me not so much to bear it tamely. Touch me with noble anger, and let not women's weapons, water drops, stain my man's cheeks. No, oh, you unnatural hags, I will have such revenges on you both that all the world shall for what they are I know not, but they shall be the terrors of the earth. You think I'll weep? No, I'll not weep. I have full cause of weeping, but this heart shall break into a hundred thousand flaws, or ere I'll weep. Oh, I shall go mad. I have been worth the whistle. Oh, God, Lord. you are not worth the dust. The crude wind blows in your face. No more, the text is foolish. Wisdom and goodness to the vile, seem vile. Filths savor but themselves. What have you done? Tigers, not daughters. What have you performed? A father and a gracious aged man whose reverence even the head loved bearably. That the heavens do not their visible spirits send quickly down to tame these vile offenses. It will come. Humanity must perforce prey on itself like monsters of the deep. Bill Clifford man that bearest a cheek for blows, a head for wrongs, who has not in thy brow an eye discerning thine honor from thy suffering, that not knowest fools do those villains pity who are punished ere they have done their mischief. <coughs> Where's thy drop? France spreads his banners in our noiseless land. With proof, tell him thy slayer begins threats, whilst thou, a moral fool, sit still and criest, Alack! Why does he so? See thyself, devil. Proper deformity is not in the fiend so horrid as in the Vain world. fool! Oh, change it and self covered thing for shame. Let one soon not be thy feature. Bread my fitness to let these hands obey my blood. And they are apt to dislocate and tear thy flesh and bones. However, thou art a fiend, a woman shaped thus. Marry your man, but now! Good my lord. Women are born disappointments. We don't have to do a thing. And then, you know, they say how badly they want a son. There's always so much in here, in this text but in general about like what being a son means and the weight that that holds. And then yet, despite all of that, how much you get put on you as a daughter immediately. Like, sure. Especially as soon as a younger sibling is born. Yeah, like, okay, sure. Lear might have had that resentment towards any of us for being girls and not having been born a son. But as daughters, we were, I don't want to say used, but like, sure, let's use that word. To whatever extent we needed to be used to fulfill whatever role we had to play, to tend to like whatever desire, whatever you needed us to be, we were shaped, we were molded, and we went. It was not that we could forge our own paths as a son, a leader, but you could make us what you wanted us to be. So for you to be like, I wish you were sons, I wish you were, like that is discounting so much of what they have already done, even within this little tiny shell that they've been yeah. placed in. And, 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 and still, even, even with those limitations, we see three strong women, three like variations of strong women. And I think that's, that's, you know that that's like that's the beauty of this language and the work we've all put into it we've we've developed something that shows a small bit of of the many faces of womanhood and what it means to be a woman <laughs>